So today, we get a chance to come out at sunrise and look at the landing boards on the beehives. Why? Because it got so cold last night, it dropped down into low 30s. In fact, it's 30 degrees Fahrenheit at the time of this video. This is a male bee, known as a drone. What's it doing out here? Well, it's been ejected by the worker bees. Drones are male bees. They are no longer needed this time of year as things get cold. Resources get slim. We're in the last throes of our nectar flow which is coming from asters and goldenrod primarily now although there are some white clovers still this male bee you can tell by his large eyes and oversized body and lots of fuzz still alive so why is he dying well the workers have decided to stop feeding him drones depend on workers to feed them and care for them while they fly out in search of virgin queens well this time of year September the 15th to be exact there are not many virgin queens heading out to those drone congregation areas so these males have lost their usefulness these are guard bees female workers also on the landing board keeping an eye on things because the air is heavy with the smell of new honey in the hives and they're bringing in just as much as they can but remember during this sequence it's actually too cold for the bees to do much flying so there's not a lot of coming and going here from this landing board but we're going to look at drones and i want to show you though the one that we just looked at overall looked physically pretty healthy some of them are not and this is going to help us determine which of the hives we need to be doing sugar rolls to look for varroa destructor mites this time of year as the honey is being taken off the last remnants this week, we're going to start shutting down the hives in preparation for winter. So it's just an opportunity to share with you some of the things you might want to look for other than the obvious dead drones cast out. You may also see some workers dead on the landing boards in the early morning and later on, of course, they're completely gone because the undertaker bees are hauling them away. Now, this is also a drone. Now we can tell by its condition that it was pulled out of its pupa state. So they uncapped it and dragged it out here and dumped it on the landing board. This gives us a great opportunity to look it over. Now in years past, we would have yellow jacket wasps on these landing boards cutting apart these discarded male bees and hauling away their thorax primarily as a protein source for their developing young wasp larvae. But you notice the wasps are absent here. Wasps have an advantage to fly when it's cold, colder than the honeybees fly. And I'm gonna show you at the end of this video what those wasps look like and where they're actually congregating. Look at the wings of these workers. The one that we just passed over there has tattered edges on her wings. She's basically in the twilight of her life. And they are also reaching their expiration date. Now here's another drone on another hive. This is problematic. Look it over, what do you see? See so a little black wrinkled material next to where the wings should be. This drone, although it was pulled in its pupa state again, and there goes another one over the side being discarded by an undertaker bee. This one on the landing board has deformed wing virus evidence. Those wings are normal on that one, but look at this graveyard here. This drone, still alive, has shriveled up wings. This is primarily caused by the Varroa destructor mite. There are other causes for a deformed wing virus, but in this case, I'm pretty sure the mite is going to be the culprit. So when we find drones in this condition, and this one is still alive, just been recently tossed off the landing board, I'm going to have to inspect this hive and see if we don't have a Varroa destructor mite infestation. And if we do, we're gonna treat with oxalic acid vaporization. This is another male bee. This one has been thoroughly chewed apart by the worker bees in his colony. And we're looking at a variety of different landing boards and this will help me prioritize them. I'm going to, of course, get into the hive that shows the most problems on the landing board first and then we'll work our way through the apiary from there. Now this is a female worker bee that's being licked over by another female worker bee. She's still alive, but she's at the end of her life as well. And you're going to see a lot of that, but don't be alarmed because a lot of workers expire. And when the weather is really cold, as it was last night, they can't fly away as they otherwise would. So instead, they're expiring on the landing board. Bees need to heat their thorax up, get those muscles warmed so they can actually fly. 
and uh, often they just don't have the energy to do that when they're at the end of their life. So this is just again another worker and I don't see evidence of varroa destructor mites physically on these bees. So that's another thing we get a chance to look at here with macro video. And you would see the varroa mite most often on their abdomen there, tucked underneath those plates, usually the first plate, the uppermost plate on the abdomen. And they feed off the stored fats of these bees. So now I'm going to show you why the wasps are not raiding the honeybee hives. And that's because we have a feeding station for wasps. I know, it doesn't seem very productive to do that, does it? These wasps are focused on one-to-one -one sugar syrup that has been amended with three teaspoons per quart of spirulina. Spirulina is nothing but algae and I was wanting to see if honeybees would come to that open feeding of spirulina and they don't. Guess what does? These yellow jacket wasps. And this gives me an opportunity to look at them very close and you can see them too. Their abdomens have very distinctive markings and what we see this time of year are a lot of queens. So the queen wasps are actually fattening up for winter and they are getting ready to go off in the woods and get into some decaying material that will help prevent them from dying through winter but as uh, that temperature closes down on them gets cold and the leaves begin to turn and the resources in the environment are reduced they're going to load up as much as they can off of nectar and syrup and high sugar contents. You'll also see them on flowers, just like the bees getting nectar. But if you're putting out a one-to-one -one like this, you know they're going to go for it. The other thing is yellow jackets can fly at much lower temperatures than the honeybees do, which gives them an advantage. They raid honeybee hives. They raid the landing boards. What was interesting about this particular specimen is she is sitting on top of the syrup. Look at her feet all splayed out there, taking advantage of the surface tension. If we added a couple of drops of dishwashing liquid to this uh, mix here, she would sink right in. And of course, they respirate through their abdomen, which is why that's pumping there. Plus, that's also how they circulate. That's their circulatory system. So it's kind of like the heart pumping there. And uh, bees the same. This is kind of like the watering hole with a bunch of lions and predators at it. So these yellow jackets, good news, are coming here instead of raiding the landing boards of the beehives. Often you would see them scooting in on the edges or trying to look for entrances in the backs of beehives this time of year. So they can get in there and take advantage of the nectar that's stored by the bees as well. And of course, the landing boards would be offering that protein that those that are still producing young, which will be falling off more and more, those producing young need meat protein to feed them. Wasps themselves cannot eat the meat protein. They chop it up with those powerful jaws. They cut the meat, they ball it up, they fly it back to their nest, and they feed it to their developing larvae. So some say that honeybees are like vegan wasps because they only get their proteins from the flowers, from the pollen. So here's a nice close up. You can see that they have two large eyes and then three simple eyes. So just like bees, they have five eyes. And this is very clear because they have much fewer hairs on their body. And this just shows how they clean things up here. And notice that their tongues are not very long. So they have to get their faces very close to the nectar source. Very complex, and here's an opportunity to look at them really close. Now the curious part is, remember, I've put out one-to-one -one sugar syrup, which would normally draw bees. Something about adding the spirulina, S-P-I-R-U-L-I-N-A. When we add that, uh, that gives them a great healthy bacteria in their digestive system. It is in suspension in the syrup, so the syrup looks almost black. The thing of it is, it'll be healthy for the wasp, but it has not drawn in the bees. So I actually may be onto something here as far as an ability to draw the wasps away from my beehives. The apiary is located about 75 feet to the east of this location. Now, what if I wanted to collect the wasps? I certainly could because there's no bees here. We could set up a trap and collect a whole pile of them if we wanted to. 
But for the purpose of this video, I'm just making observations about the wasps, what their condition is, what they're drinking, and I'm giving you close-ups of these powerful mandibles that they have that are designed to cut flesh. And then you can also see their tongues and how they drink. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I do suggest that if you're in the northeastern United States or where it's getting cold now, that you make those early sunrise investigations of your landing boards. And then on a nice warm day, open those hives, get your sugar shake out or your alcohol system, whatever you're going to use to count Varroa mites, because we're at the point now where we absolutely have to treat for Varroa mites if they're overrun. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a fantastic rest of the week.